Here on this Tobacco University video, I'm going to go over plant and animal defenses that will involve physical means, chemical means, as well for animals, forms of mimicry. All right, let's get into some of the plant and animal defenses here. So starting with the plant defenses. Well, plants have evolved many mechanisms to defend themselves from herbivores, which is kind of a feeding. Uh, they have developed morphological or what's structural defenses such as thorns, spines, and prickles. Uh, basically, all of these are just deterrents from an animal coming in or something coming in and feeding on them. We see here with the structural defenses of the sharpness to the leaves here, of the American holly, of uh, evolutionary modified stems or thorns on the honey locust, and here we see leaves modified into spines in the form of this barrel cactus. Now plants have also evolved uh, chemical defenses. These are secondary chemical compounds. They can be found in most algae as well. Mustard oil, so we can see in this image here, is one common one, and this is found of course in the mustard family, the Brassica casea. Now these plant defenses, these mustard oils themselves, uh, protect plants from herbivores, at least at first. Um, however, some uh, have been able, some insects have evolved to be able to break down the mustard oil. And these insects were able to use this new resource without competing with uh, other herbivores for it. And this is a great example of the cabbage butterfly caterpillars. What they do is they basically consume the mustard plant and they don't have to worry about uh, any other competition because other insects haven't evolved that kind of way to kind of combat that mustard oil. Now for animal defenses, uh, some animals receive uh, an additional benefit from eating plants rich in secondary chemical compounds. So for example, the caterpillars of the butterfly, uh, the monarch butterfly in particular, concentrate and store these compounds. They then pass them on to the adult and even the potential eggs of the next generation. Birds that eat the bu butterflies regurgitate them because of their bad taste. So here's an example of an insect able to kind of take in those, um, those compounds uh, and carry them over and have a benefit uh, to be reduced predation on them. Now we also have other animal defenses such as cryptic coloration where a color that blends into the surrounding. Uh, we have the interim caterpillar we see here with the owls, uh, the different frog colors, uh, the flounder on the bottom here, whether it's a fine kind of sand or whether it's a larger coarse uh, gravelly base can kind of easily blend into that. And of course that's gonna help reduce the odds of predators finding them, consuming them and reducing their total numbers. We also have other animal defenses, and one that kind of goes completely against the blending in is the having a showy color, the asymptomatic coloration. This is advertising poisonous nature, as we see here with these frogs. Uh, these are very uh, poisonous frogs, and they kind of, instead of blending in, they go the opposite. They want to be loud and proud and kind of show off and say, I'm poisonous, you can easily see me, stay away from me. Uh, there's, other, there's also other chemical defenses. So alkaloids are known as having a varying degree of impacts on humans. Low doses can have beneficial effects. High doses can be toxic or even cause death. Alkaloids can be found in the stings of bees or wasps, which of course can be deadly to some people, but in low doses may have potential for some medical benefits in others. And then we have those to toxic alkaloids, as we see here, of course, with our very brightly colored frogs. Now with mimicry, it's a close uh, external resemblance of an animal or plant to another. Many non-poisonous species have evolved to resemble poisonous ones with asymptomatic coloration. Uh, Bayesian mimicry here is a harmless, unprotected species mimics or resembles the poisonous model that exhibits the asymptomatic coloration. If the mimics are relatively scarce, they will be avoided by predators. This concept is kind of like the sheep's in wolf clothing, and this mimic must be present in low numbers for this to be effective. Now, the other form of mimicry is called malarian mimicry, and this is where two or more unrelated but protected species come to resemble one another. Thus, a group defense is achieved. So we have the viceroy butterfly, which is an edible bu bu uh, butterfly, and we have the monarch butterfly, which is very distasteful. So if we look at them, here we see the monarch on the left and the viceroy on the right. These are examples of two species, two butterflies, resembling malarian mimicry. So now just a quick comparison between uh, these two forms of mimicry. We have the uh, Bayesian mimicry, which is a deadly and a non-deadly species. Uh, and this is, has deadly consequences for the predator if they make the wrong selection.
In contrast to that malarian mimicries we just saw, both can be eaten, but one does not taste as good as the other um, and is a look-alike, and therefore is also assumed not to taste good. But the key part with malarian mimicries, neither are poisonous. It's simply an unpleasant experience for the predator. We kind of see that example here. If you had something really bitter or really uh, sour, uh, it's kind of an example here of just an unpleasant experience would be malarian mimicry. Bayesian mimicry is going to have that deadly consequence. And then lastly, we have self-mimicry, which is adaptations where one animal body part comes to resemble another. This type of mimicry is used by both predator and prey. An example here, we see eye spots found in many butterflies, moths, fish, and other animals as well. The fish, for example, the eye spots, uh, the predator typically will aim for the eyes. So in this case, with the eye being located towards the back, uh, the predator will naturally go behind the eye and aim for this area, which of course will just be water, and that will allow the fish here to escape from that degree of predation. So this hopefully gives you a little bit of background here of some plant and animal defenses.